Rolling. Hi, my name is Jim Forat, and I'm 73 years old, and I am a gay man. And yes, I was at Stonewall for the full four nights, and part of the group of gay men and lesbians who formed the Gay Liberation Front in 1969. You've asked a very interesting question. How have things changed, and are they significantly changed, and is there anything left to, to be changed for gay and lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people in America today? Well, it's, it's a very, very complicated response I'm going to give you, because on one hand, the world today is nothing we could have imagined in 1969. The, the visibility of gay men and lesbians everywhere in America in all kinds of roles that were forbidden to them. Because homosexuality was illegal, uh, you could not be out and be a lawyer, a doctor, a judge, a police officer, a fireman, a nurse, a teacher, and the list goes on and on and on. So that has changed. Today we have openly gay lesbians and openly gay men in all of the jobs that I just spoke to you about. There's still some places where it's very difficult, like actors. Very few actors have been able to come out and still have a career. But yes, it's fundamentally changed, and it's, it, it's like in 45 years to have this amount of change was unfathomable to us in 1969. In fact, we didn't think a lot about what it would be like 45 years from now. So what is left to be done? We, we now have the right to get married, which is a basic civil right. It's not a radical idea. All citizens should be treated equally under the law. And we have the right to be in the military. I'm not a very pro-military person. I've never been in my life. I've been on the anti-war side of politics. But again, here is a, a, a basic civil right that all citizens should be treated equally. So if you want to go into the military, and there's lots of reasons that people do go into the military. It's not, not to fight, but it's also one of the only jobs for particularly minority people uh, to get in the economy that we're in. But homophobia is alive and well in America despite the advances that we've made. All you have to do is listen to any evangelical preacher or right-wing politician. They always pull out the gay card when they want to take people away from the real economic conditions that, that we live under, which are pretty bad right now. There aren't a whole lot of jobs for a lot of people. So fighting homophobia and, and the damage that homophobia does is, uh, is, is critical. There's also bullying. And by bullying, I mean when you're different, and it doesn't just have to be that you're gay or lesbian. You might be perceived as being gay and lesbian, in fact, or not because of your gender expression. Uh, bullying is pretty universal still today. There is more recognition that it happens, but we have to change it, and it really starts in the education. Where do kids learn the words that they use when they bully and the attitudes that they have when they bully a person who's different and call them a fag or a dyke or a sissy or a fairy? They come right in the home. They come in the church. I'm going to be hard on organized religion because I think across the board, even though there's allies in every one of the, of the, of the major churches in America who support the rights of gays and lesbians, it's not the dominant religious position. The Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, for instance, is very clear, like the Mormon Church, very clear in its opposition to equal rights for lesbians and gays. So there's a lot of work yet to be done. When we have so many people out that it doesn't matter, that people don't see them. See, what happens when you're out? Suddenly, I'm Jim, and I'm a complicated human being, and I have a lot of interests in things in my life, and I tell you I'm gay, the first thing that most people think about is sex. Well, sex is a part of being gay, it's a part of being heterosexual, but I don't look at every straight person and think sex when I see them, but a lot of people do that to gay people. That's because we haven't rid homophobia from our society. So how do we change that? We change that by talking to people, talking to kids like you, first of all. Here's an old man talking to a 13-year-old, and I'm very excited that you asked me these questions. 
It's also about finding out who lives in your neighborhood who may be gay or lesbian. Just find out that we're totally normal people in the sense that we're just like, you know, we're human beings. Yes, we're different. Uh, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with being different in our culture. There's all their kinds of differences in our culture, racial, economic, etc. But uh, gay people are not just like straight people. And anyone who thinks that that's all we want, from my point of view, is wrong. I just want to be able to be who I am and be comfortable with that. And I want to be able to work together with you to make a better world. And that's how I think we combat homophobia. Not me just selfishly saying I want my rights, but me saying with you or to the undocumented worker who has a teenage son or daughter who wants to go to college, has done good in school, and is denied the right to get, get tuition assistance. That's what the DREAM Act is about. So, um, so I am people like me go and stand with the kids in the street and their parents as openly gay and lesbian people fighting for the DREAM Act or fighting against stop and frisk. All those other issues are also my issues because my community is very, very diverse. It is um, all different colors. Gay and lesbian people come in all different colors. They're just not white gay men, which is what the media tries to say. Our genders are different. Um, we're male and female. Our gender expression is all over the place, just like straight people. You know, we have butchers and femmes and everything in between. Uh, the economic conditions of gay and lesbian people, most people think we're all rich. Well, surprise, surprise, we're not all rich. And I can tell you as an old, poor gay man, I don't like that when people think that, I, that I'm rich just because I'm a white gay male. So it's, life is complicated, but I'm hopeful. I'm very, very hopeful because I think the parents, like your parents, Sarah, Hannah, you know, brought up their children differently than I was brought up. I think feminism, the women's liberation movement, has prepared uh, mothers and fathers to bring up their kids differently, and I notice it. Hey, we're talking. Jim is talking to Hannah about very important things. Hope that answers your question.